الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم تسليمي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضي الله تعالى عن سادة التابعين والعلماء العاملين ورئيمة رضاعة المشتكيين ومن مقاربهم إلى يوم الدين وضاعة The Muslim is required it is wajib is an obligation that every single Muslim have husnu one billah. That every single slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a good opinion of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husnu one billah. It's an obligation. In the Sahih hadith, it said Al Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana inda dhwani abdi li wa ana ma'ahu idha da'ani The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalala says, I am just as my slave thinks of me. I am just as my slave thinks the thought that he has about me, his one, that is how I am. What does that mean? That means that each and every single individual in this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a one has some sort of belief or some sort of, not even belief, have some sort of opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And however you think of your Rabb, of subhanahu wa ta'ala, jala jalala, that is how he is going to behave or act with that particular slave. You have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, good things will happen. You have su'ufan billah, you have a bad opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing good will come out of that. So Allah says, I am just as my slave thinks of me. That is going to vary from individual to individual. News flash. Breaking news. Everyone in here with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has their own kind of thoughts about him. There will be some similarities, but there will be many differences on your relationship and how you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not required to think the exact same thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, there are some things that are obligation. You can't, can't veer from that, etc. That's not what we're talking about here. Basic things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell heel aqeel. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about your opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with respect to how he answers your supplication, your du'a, things that he does in the individual's life that will vary. That will vary from person to person. So when an individual raises their hands and makes supplication and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's not to say that they have to. Some people can make dua while their hands on their sides. That's fine too. That's not the point here. When an individual calls on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have to do so with determination, with what's called azm. Because the Prophet says in the Hadith Sahih, that's in the Sahih of Al-Bukhari, إِذَا دَعَا أَحَرَقُمْ فَلِيَعْزِمْ فِي الدُّعَا When any of you call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should do so with strong sense of determination. In other words, it shouldn't be lazily done. Sometimes the dua has become. It's become a ritual. Supplication has become a ritual for some. There's something that you do right after the slide, you just raise your hands, and you do it. It has no meaning to it. The thalam isn't even in it, the heart isn't in it, there's no determination. It's just after some you just raise your hands and say, Thinking about, like, thinking about getting home with food, the bill that just came in the mailbox, yeah, he's gone. Christmas. <laughs> where is the thunder? Where is the heart in, in the supplication in the dua? 
It should be with azam, with a strong sense of determination. And then understanding as of that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have an usul of Allah, having a good opinion of Allah, that he's going to answer it whenever he sees fit, when he wants to. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not making haste in that. Because mankind has been created that way, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Inna al-insan khulqa halua'a. Anxious. Halua'a. That verily mankind has been created hasty. He has a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiousness. He or she is very anxious. <coughs> Making haste is from the shaitan. Rushing, 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 rushing. It's from the shaitan. With the exception when it's time to bury somebody, you should rush to bury him fast. If you owe somebody a debt, you should rush to pay that debt fast. If you're ready to get married, prepare for marriage, you should run and get married fast. Those are things which it is recommended and commendable for you to rush to do. But in general, individuals should not be so hasty to rush into things. As, as one of the brother has said, Al-Ajilatu Hayb al-Rijal That making haste is from the Hayb. Hayb is what women have. It's a cycle. Period. He said, and the IG that too making haste is the period of a man. That's his cycle. That's his cycle. The cycle of a man is when he's rushing all the time. Then you on your cycle, man. The rushing and stuff. Calm down, now. Keep have patience. That's his hate. His menstrual cycle. When he rushes into everything. No deliberation. No istakhar. No nothing. Just rushing. Haste into these kind of things. The last thing that I leave you with, with with respect to dua is a particular dua which the Prophet Sallallahu told Mu'ad ibn Jabal to watch out for when he sent him to Yemen. He sent him to Yemen to go and teach the people to go give da'wah, to call people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He said, you're going to come across the people of the book. Teach them the shahada, tell them the shahada, establish the prayers, the cat, etc. And then the last advice that he gave him was, What taqi da'watin madhloom? Fa innahu laysa bayna Allahi wa baynaha hijab. The Prophet said, Watch out for, beware of the supplication of the person who has been wronged. That was called the Dakwatan Mountain For verily, there is no barrier, no hijab, no barrier in between that supplication and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the supplication of the oppressed. Allah answers the supplication of those who have been wronged. You gotta watch out for that supplication. Many of people and nations have been destroyed because of this dua. Many of people have been brought to their knees because of the supplication of the oppressed. Watch out for that one. Because those are one of the sins that is hard to rectify. You see, sins can be broken down into three. One is regarding the obligations which a person owes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as salat and fasting and things of that nature. How you make an expiation or amends with that is by simply performing those duties. That's the first type of sin, is leaving the wajib back, obligations. The second one are things which be acts that people are involved in, such as substance abuse, drugs, drinking, etc. How does a person amend that? By kicking those habits and then repenting, turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is between Allah and his slave. The third one, which is the most difficult to amend, is where a slave, one of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wrongs another slave, another creation of Allah. That's hard to rectify. Because at times you can't just simply turn to Allah when you've wronged or taken another individual's rights. That's a hard one to amend. Hard. 
By the way, that goes for either Muslim or non-Muslim. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not biased when it comes to adal, when it comes to justice. <coughs> Beware. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not biased when it comes to belief in even kufr, when it involves adal, when it involves justice and injustice. Bull. If you wrong a non-Muslim as a Muslim and the kafir lifts his hands and says, this Muslim has wronged me and makes no eye get you, you better watch out. Watch out. So the devil to not know the supplication of the people who have been oppressed is something that a Muslim has to be very leery of, wronging other people, misappropriating funds, Stealing the wealth of the people, violating the people's honor, meaning their, meaning their wives and their daughters and their women folk, because that's the ir, that is the hurma, that is the sanctity, the ihtiram, 